One last one. Yeah, if you watched that last video, I turned that frown upside down. But let's still do that game plan. Don't worry, I got you. We got a game plan. A game plan. So what do we want to do? One, we want to get the zeros of the numerator. Why? Because that's where it's going to cross or bounce the x-axis. When I say it, I mean the graph of your rational expression. Then. You're going to get the zeros of the denominator. Why? The zeros of the denominator are your vertical asymptotes. Dot, 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 Then, you're going to test the intervals. That's when you put them on a number line, and you see whether it's positive or negative in those regions. Why? Because that's going to tell you whether or not your graph is above or below the x-axis. Then, you're going to get the end behavior. Oh, behave. Zero, oblique, or somewhere in between. It's the numero finis and the denominator. So I'm sure you saw that video. So you're going to stick to the game plan. Zeros of the numerator, zeros of the denominator. Test the intervals, end behavior, and then you're going to put it all together in one pretty picture. Now let's go draw that picture. Now that we have that game plan, let's find the zeros of the numerator. Zeros of the denominator. Test our intervals. Find our end behavior. And then graph. Here we go. One, I half. Two, set that numerator equal to zero. Okay, so then x turns out to be one. Uh-huh. Not going to give me my zeros. And then, two, I set the denominator equal to zero. And when I do, I get an x squared plus a 4x plus a 3 equal to zero. I factor. I'm looking for the factors of 3 that add to be 4. Bam, bam, 3 and 1. x and x. The sides are the same and they're both plus, plus, oh. I think I have a screw loose. Alright, so then x minus is equal to a minus 1 and a minus 3. Tee hee, tee hee. That's going to get we our vertical asymptotes. Here we go. I'm testing in fully factored form. Oh, there. x squared plus 4x plus 3. No, I wanted to factor that. Go, go, gadget, factor. And when I do, I get an x plus 1 times an x plus 3. And I'm testing that on this line. Looks like I got a minus 3. I've got a minus 1. And I've got a 1. So now I need a value to the left of yellow. Follow me over here, fellow. This is a minus 3, so I need a value less than minus 3. It's a minus 4. So I put a minus 4 in there, and that's going to be, wait for it, minus. I put a minus 4 in there. That's a minus 3, but I don't care about the actual retail value of the function. I'm worried about its sign. Here, Bill Ingvall, here's your sign. When I put a minus 4 in there, I got a minus, and then I got tres minus, which makes minus. And then in here I have a minus 2, so I pick minus 2 and I put it up there. Minus 2 minus a 1 is a minus 3, and that's minus. A minus 2 plus 1, oh, wait, that's minus. It's a minus 1. And then I put a minus 2 in there, and that becomes plus, because it's a positive 1. And yes, it changes sign at that factor, where that's that 0. So then I have an even number of negative signs, so that's plus. In between, minus 1 and 1 is 0. So then I take 0. And I put it in there, that's minus. I take zero, and I put it in here, that's plus. I take zero, and I put it in there, that's plus. I have one minus sign, so the sign of my function, my function's going to be below the x-axis, in between minus one and one. I'm almost done. To the right of one. To the right of one, I pick five. So I take five, and I put five in there. Five minus one, plus four. Five plus one, plus six. 5 plus 3 plus 8, and it's all coming up pluses. Are they always going to alternate sign? No. If any of these are multiplicity even, it won't. 
And that would be a quick way to graph this. But we're following the game plan. The game plan. Next step in the game plan, we need to look at the end behavior. Oh, behave. Numero finis, denominators. When the denominator is bigger in degree, it goes to ceros. We're talking about large and small values of, of x. So what's next? Graphing this guy. So I go and I throw my zeros on there. I'm going to have a zero here at 1. Boom. Why? Because that was the zero of the numerator. Then I'm going to have asymptotes at minus 1. Minus 3. And then I'm going to use my signs and my end behavior. Oh, behave. It's at zero. So I'm going to go and I'm looking at my signs. Looks like to the left of minus 3, it's negative. So wait, which values are negative? The ones above zero or the ones below zero? Below zero is negative, so this goes down there. It's okay? Okay. So then in between minus 3 and minus 1, it's positive. I could find the value there at 2. If I put 2 in there, that would be minus 1 divided by 3 times 5, 15. It's going to be, oh, that's a minus 2. So I put minus 2 in there, so that's a minus 3 divided by a minus 2 times 1. So that's a minus 3. It's a positive 3 halves. So if that's 1, it would go to here. You don't really have to do that, but if you want more accuracy in your graph, I see I'm above the line in there. So it comes from positive infinity and then goes back to positive infinity. And now we are determining where we go from this asymptote. Do we start at the bottom or do we start at the top? Do we start at minus infinity or plus infinity? We can see by the sign to the right of minus 1. It's negative, so that says start at minus infinity. And then it goes to this 0. I could find the y-intercept by putting 0 in here. If I put 0 here, here, and here, it looks like I'm at minus 1 third. So it's going to get way up there. Crosses at minus 1 third. Hits that and crosses. Oh, and then behaves to 0 after that. It's probably a little edgy there. Probably maybe your round. Mm, but that's the end of my round. I'm done. Box and flower.